Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I will be doing the player satisfaction survey for Dead by Daylight and uh, give my thoughts on it. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Dead by Daylight content. Now let's see what's in the, in the survey. They say it'll take 12 minutes, so let's see. How satisfied are you with Dead by Daylight? Uh, I'll put a neutral there just because there's a lot of problems that have been prevalent in the game that have not been fixed yet, but I'm not totally dissatisfied with it. Let's see, I feel that the game is fair. Nope, that is not true. Um, I'll agree on this because I make videos on DVD and I do like helping out other players, so I think the time I play is worth it because I'm using it to help out you guys. Dead by Daylight is fun. I'll slightly disagree with that. This is like a question that's different for everyone. I've been playing the game for four years, so it's kind of getting boring for me a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. Is DVD fun for you? I know mobile was having a lot of frustrations. Mobile players were. Or at least the mobile players in my Discord. Anyway. Which role do you play most? Killer, prefer to play killer, because as killer you don't have to deal with bull teammates or dumb teammates, and you don't have to deal with farming killers because you are the killer. So just killer, you kind of have less kind of BS stuff to deal with, but then at the same time you have to deal with annoying survivors, but really annoying survivors are not that bad. Um, which platforms do you play DVD on? Just PC at the moment. Just PC? I mean, I have a Switch, but I don't play DVD on it. When did you start playing DVD? Four years ago. Have you played the latest chapter? Yes, I played both roles. How did you hear about the chapter? Uh, the official trailer, I'll say that. How satisfied are you with the latest chapter? I'll say neutral, because I think the survivor perks are cool, and the killer perks are cool as well for the most part, but I really don't like the Blight's power that much, and the power is good. It's not great, but it is a good power. It's just a power that, personally, I don't enjoy playing. Because I feel like there are other killers that have a better version of his power, so why not just play those better killers, you know? And I just don't want to put in the time to learn how to play this killer when I can already just play Nurse, you know? Did I play DBD prior? Yep. Or, yeah, actively. Perk descriptions! How would you rate the following survivor perks in terms of usefulness? Okay, so this is going over the newest chapter. Visionary, not at all useful. Okay, we already have Deja Vu, and I think Deja Vu is better than Visionary because it helps you not bottleneck your last three gems. Visionary is basically Deja Vu, but some adjustments to make it not exactly Deja Vu, I think it's dumb. Desperate measures, I think is a pretty interesting perk. It's kind of like the counter to Xanatophobia, even though they're changing Xanatophobia soon, so healing isn't included in that. And Built to Last, I'll say that's a very good one because there's a lot of killer perks that take away item efficiency, so having something to restore that item efficiency is nice. Um, what potential does each new survivor perk have to work well with others? I'll say a little chance for synergy, just because it's an aura reading perk, but I don't like visionary, so that's why I say a little. Desperate Measures definitely has a lot of chances for synergy and healing builds. You can pair it with Body Knowledge, Spine Chill, um, possibly will make it. Somebody said they removed the 100% heal cap, so if that is true, then you could pair it with will make it. I haven't tested it myself to know if that is true, if that person is just making things up. But if you know, let me know in the comments below. And Built to Last, I don't know how you would use that perk with other perks. 
maybe like streetwise so you get more usage. So I'll say a little because streetwise is the only one I can think of at the moment. Maybe botany knowledge because it preserves medkit efficiency. But built to last is more of a standalone perk in my opinion. How would you rate the quality of the following features? Character appearance? Well, we gotta put a very high quality there, right? I think everyone agrees that Felix Richter is a good-looking survivor. Backstory, I'll put NA because I did not read the backstory at all, so being honest here, I did not read any of the lore. How engaging do you find the general feel and theme of Felix? I mean, I don't really care. So I'll, I'll just say a little. The reason I don't really care is because all survivors are basically the same to me. You just get them for their unique perks and then you're done with them. Okay, how fun is it to play with the following killer perks? Dragon script will say somewhat because survivors don't always tap the generator right away and if you're not there to chase them off, you can't get use out of it. Hex undying, I think will be moderately because it gives you a lot more chances for your hex perks. However, they can cleanse hex undying first and then, well, you get no use out of it. Hex blood fever, I'll say not at all. Because the range on blood fever is way too small. So even though you do hit that survivor, they get the speed boost, they go to a different looping area where pallets are not blocked. So that range needs to be slightly increased. What potential does each nuclear perk have to work well with other character perks? Well, Dragon's Grip definitely has moderate chances for synergy with things such as Pop Goes the Weasel or Overcharge and other generator perks that make you kick Jen's uh, brutal strength as well. So I actually put quite a few now. Hex Undying, I will put considerable chances for synergy because it goes well with every hex perk except for token hex perks, but there's a lot you could do with it. And then uh, hex blood favor, I'll put a little chance just because of hex undying and stuff. Okay, I'll put moderate because hex blood favor, you can pair it with bamboozle and hex undying and hex haunted ground or whatever you want. How would you rate the quality of these features? The Blight appearance? I mean, I think his appearance is good, I just wish he wasn't so short. Like, every time I play him, I feel like I'm shorter than the survivors. I'm so... he's so short. But appearance, I'll put high quality. Um, power? I'll say neutral there. Like, his power gives him really great map control. Because he can go across the map. I just don't like the fact that you have to crash into a wall in order to injure somebody. And I just think that's bad mechanic right there, is forcing yourself to go into a wall to hit somebody. Um, character backstory, NA, because I did not read it that much. I mean, I knew he was from the Hollowed Blight event, and I know he kind of, you know, went crazy because he was testing the serum and stuff. But I didn't actually read the full in-game stuff. How engaging, um, I'll say moderately, I guess. I mean, his killer power is very engaging. You have to think and be very careful about how you use it. <laughs> Matchmaking, nice. Matchmaking time, I'll put a negative there because it seems like when they first put in crossplay, the times were a lot better, but I think a lot of console players, are, oh, a lot of people are turning their crossplay off or something because now the queue times seem to be long again. Um, teammates matched with. Um, I'll put negative there because every time I play Survivor, I get teammates that act like they just bought the game. Opponents matched against. I'll put a negative there as well because I've been a yellow rank killer and sometimes I get purple rank or red rank survivors and I have no problem with it. But I'm just like sympathizing here with true yellow rank killers where they get these high rank survivors that outskill them and they don't know how to counter it just because their skill isn't there yet or they have not encountered survivors that know what they're doing before. So I think that's kind of bad for the game to have 
such high ranked players being matched with newer players. Okay, Dead by Daylight is undergoing graphic updates. Which of the following most reflect what you expect from updating characters? Okay, well, let's see. Textures on characters, facial structure, overall smoothness of characters, I don't care about that. The way characters move into actions, how the environment affects the characters. Uh, I would probably say the textures, mostly. Textures and facial structures. Definitely top two on this. Which of the flying characters do you feel could benefit from an update to their gameplay? Select a killer you feel is not effective enough. Mm -hmm. Wraith is definitely the weakest killer just because he has to double hit everyone and his power doesn't help him catch people, it just helps him find people. So I'll say the Wraith. And select a killer you feel is too oppressive. For this one, I gotta say Freddy, because a lot of Freddies just run the most annoying builds and add-ons. You know what I'm talking about. And it just makes the game last forever. And every time you go against a Freddy, it's like, uh. Like, they were supposedly gonna fix a lot of issues with him with the rework, but he can still slow things down a ton with his add-ons. It's just annoying as Survivor to deal with the Freddy that has like Danatophobia, Sloppy, and then his jump rope and whatever. I don't know the add-ons off the top of my head, but I just know it's super annoying. Why do you feel the Wraith could benefit from an update? His power is too weak. I'll say this as well, there's too many counter players against him. He's a basic M1 killer, he doesn't have the power to give those survivors the boot. Okay, they are not fun to play against. I wish they had a freaking hit his power makes the game so boring tab here. <laughs> um, Cause his power is not that strong, it's just his stuff is annoying. I'll say this then, there's not enough counterplay because of he can stack all his add-ons with perks and just slow things down a lot. And as Survivor, the only way to really counter that would be prove thyself and possibly like botany knowledge and stuff. Okay, how fun to play are killers with the following qualities? Killers with high skill ceilings. Ooh, yes. More of those, please. Killers with low s skill ceilings. I'll say a little fun. Killers who are more complex, yes please. Killers with a lot of decision-making opportunities. Killers where the choices during gameplay are straightforward. Does that mean the killer is easy to play or harder to play? I'll say somewhat because I'm not really sure what that means. Like what if you see a survivor um, on your left and then a survivor on your right? <laughs> like what are they talking about? Killers with resource management elements, I'll say not fun because this isn't a freaking resource management game. This is a I'm going to kill you game. Um, not fun. No simple killers, please. How fun is it to play against killers? Killers with high skillings, you know, I'll say very fun because if you're going against a killer that has a high skill ceiling and then that killer is still learning, they're really easy to go against, but also if they have a high skill ceiling, it will make you feel better about outplaying them because you know that that killer really knows what they're doing and you actually outplayed them. Yep, killers are more complex. These are just exactly the same. Killers with low skill ceilings. I mean, I'll say somewhat on these. Let's see, to what extent do you agree with the following? A status effect shows whenever a survivor is affected by a special effect or affliction. There are too many status effects in DVD. There's definitely a lot, so I'll somewhat agree with that. That is true though, more status effects do increase dynamic gameplay. So I'll put neutral there. Adding new status effects would bring value to Dead by Daylight. It gives players more to learn, but if they make their tutorial better, it wouldn't be a problem. And add more tips so people know what it means. 
adding new status effects would make Dead by Daylight too complicated. I don't agree with that because DBD is already a pretty simple game. They would have to add a lot to make things more complicated. Plus, every status effect is super basic anyway. So once you see it, you kind of know what it does. Like exposed, oh, you get hit from healthy to dying. Oh, hemorrhage, you just bleed more frequently so it's easier for the killer to track you. Like, these are all simple stuff. How would you rate your experience with other players? Ooh. Well, everybody knows how salty the post-game chat is. So I'll put a very negative for that. During a match, I'll say somewhat negative because as Survivor, I always get bad teammates and they're annoying to deal with. Like I was injured once and I chased this guy across the entire map and he literally ignored me and wouldn't heal me. And I was like doing some archive or something so I didn't have self-care. Okay, outside of the game, I'll say positive. When I've talked to people on the DBD forums or you guys that watch my videos, everything has been pretty positive, so that's a plus. To what extent do following have a negative effect on how much fun you have? Uh, very much negative. Players DCing, huge problem because people DC because there's no penalty for it. And people don't care about ranks, so they don't care about the D rank, they don't care about their blood points, they just DC because they're not having fun, or they DC because they go down in the first minute of the game. And players DCing is so bad because as killer, sometimes you have an archive, and if players are DCing all the time, you can't get the archive done. So, yeah. General negativity in chat. I'll say no negative because I don't care, you know, I understand people are salty, and that's their own problem. Survivors working against their team, ooh, 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 yes. Like when people BM or throw pallets in your face. Survivors in- yep, so, got that survivor hiding in a locker until they get crows, literally doesn't leave locker so killer ignores them because they know that person's gonna stay in locker all game. Ooh, survivors using keys. Does this mean we'll get key changes in the next patch? Not the mid- not the mid-chapter, obviously, but the one after that. Using gestures or emotes? Nope, I love gestures and emotes. Keep them in. It's like one of the only ways to interact with people during the game. Killer standing very close to hook survivors. That's what borrowed time is for, bruh. Killer's leaving dying players on the ground. It's a valid strategy. Killer is using Mori's. I'll say somewhat just because Mori's are a tiny bit um, overpowered where if the killer just hooks someone once and then kills them, it just increases that killer's pressure so much and this is just a fact, but that's if they can get the Mori off. So I'll say somewhat just because it can put the game in the killer's favor really quickly. Oh, what have a negative effect on fairness. Very negative. I mean, how does talking bad in chat affect fairness of anything? Survivors working against their team? Very negative on the fairness. Ignoring objectives? Yep. Keys? Yep, unfair. Keys would be fine if the killers could grab survivors while they use the key. And if the hatch had some kind of progress bar for the key, because right now it's like an insta-leave and the killer literally cannot counter it at all. So it's a get out of jail free pass for survivors. I don't know what- how does this affect fairness? It doesn't. Uh, I'll say somewhat because there are forehead survivors out there that freaking crouch next to the hook or by the hook and they see the killer there so they just stay crouched the entire time. Killer is leaving dying players on the ground. Nope. I think it's fair because slugging only happens when the survivors mess up. Killers using mores, I'll say somewhat unfair for survivors. <laughs> to what extent do you believe the following are toxic? Players DCing mid-match definitely toxic to your survivors on your team. General negativity and chat. Yep, that's toxic. People are toxic all the time. Survivors working against their team. Survivors ignoring 
I don't know if this is toxic as much as the survivor is just too scared to do stuff. I'll say somewhat, because the survivor could be doing it intentionally, but they could also be doing it because they're just too scared to move, you know? <laughs> Survivors using keys, I mean, is part of the game. I'll say somewhat toxic, actually, because there are swift groups out there that will purposely bring keys and then bring the killer to hatch to use the key in front of their faces, and that is toxic. But just using the key to escape is not toxic. Using gestures or emotes? Nope. Other people think it's toxic, but I don't think it is. It's only toxic if you make it toxic, really. And you know any survivor that does that is trying to get your attention, so I always ignore people that spam emote or spam crouch me because I know they want to get chased, and the only reason they're doing that is because they know their team sucks, so. Killer standing very close to hook survivors. Let's say a little bit. Killers leaving dying players on the ground. I'll say somewhat. Because... I mean, they're not having any extra context to anything. Like, if you're slugging people so you can get the 4k, that's not toxic, that's good strategy. But if you're slugging everybody and letting them all bleed out on purpose and not hooking anybody on purpose just to make the survivors wait, then that is toxic. Killers using mores. I mean, killers usually only use mores because they think they're going against the swift. So I don't think they're toxic really. Plus they got rid of mori spamming now, so you can't do it anymore. So that kind of killed all the toxicity with mores. Okay. Which of the following official DVD channels do you engage with? I mean, I follow the Twitter just for updates, and I follow the Discord for updates, and I go on the forums sometimes. I follow their YouTube. Who watches the Steam page anymore? I used to, before they had the DVD forums. Okay. What sort of information do you want to receive more of? Let's say news about events, news about characters or chapters, don't care about this, killers, survivors, this. I mean, I don't really care about fun facts. I just care about what's happening with the game. But I'll say fun facts about the game. And that is all. Dead by date. Through the- yes because they have been tweeting all this stuff about oh we have free blood points use this code I see it everywhere oh wait this is a multiple choice i'll say gaining bp just because i can be lazier <laughs> okay I, I have noticed a change in the type of twitter posts on the official twitter i mean they seem to be the same twitter they you know share uh, fan content and announce things. And I'm not a big Twitter person. I just have a Twitter mostly for my YouTube and Twitch channels. I'll just put neutral for all of these because I don't really look that de in depth on their tweets. I just read the tweets and say, oh, that's cool or whatever. What adjectives do you feel best describe the tone and voice of official DVD posts? I'll say casual, informative, <laughs> out of touch, deadpan, <laughs> edgy, definitely not edgy, <laughs> flippant, fun. Um, I'll say, I mean, I put enthusiastic because they retweet fan art and cosplays and stuff, and so they're kind of like um, supporting their community there. I'll say helpful because I want to know about extra blood points if I didn't read it. <laughs> How often do you watch live streams of any games? I don't really watch DVD streams at all. But it says any games. So I'll say a few times a week. Because sometimes I go through Twitch and look at what's what, but I don't really watch DVD. Do you currently live stream? 
I'll say yes, even though it's been a month since I've live streamed. <laughs> Why you watch games being live streamed? I want to learn about new games. Um, I want to learn about a game before I buy it. I enjoy the game being played. I want to learn how to play better. I enjoy the streamer's personality. I'll say all of the these are all true. I like chatting with people, and if the streamer is skilled at the game, I like watching them for their skill. <laughs> Obviously for the financial gain, why would anybody stream for the fun? Um, I mean, I have made some really good friends with the people that have watched my stream. So I'll say that. That was something I never expected, was to actually make friends through streaming. Um, to interact with you guys, definitely. To have fun and to showcase the games I love. And I'll say other because I also like to teach people how to play the game or answer anybody's questions that they have on the game. To what extent do you, the following motivate you to play DVD? In-game events? Nope. Unless they have some kind of event-only cosmetic. Which even then, I don't really want to play at all. Crossplay, don't care. Don't care about that. It's gonna be the same game, it doesn't matter if it's released on a new console. I literally do not care about archives anymore. Because some of the archives are so stupid, and you guys know what I mean. The release of new chapters, I'll say... Uh, somewhat? Because it's a new killer, and new killers can make the game more interesting. The release of new cosmetic content, uh, I don't really care for. Have you purchased any cosmetics from the in-game store in the last three months? No. I mean, the one I did purchase was from my free orc cells, so I don't think it counts. Um, probably just browsing, yeah. Have I recommended DVD to a friend? I guess some friends, yeah. Yes. Definitely have taken breaks from DVD. Let's see, why did I come back? Well, to make games. I mean, <laughs> to make videos, duh. Let's see. Either an event, a new chapter being released, don't care about tomes, new feature. That's the only reasons I would come back to DVD after taking a break. Are hindering from you? Um, I'll say the, com the in game community. The in-game community of the toxicness. Matchmaking wait time, matchmaking accuracy, and yeah, that's it. Ooh, asking the good questions now. US? What year I was born? Um, don't look at this stuff. Close your eyes. I'm a veteran, I've been playing for years. Have anything else to share? Fix. Keys. Bruh. Oops. Bruh. Alright, well that does it for the player satisfaction survey. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me go through this entire survey and talk about it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and comment below on what your thoughts are of the satisfaction survey and what you said to the devs on the survey. What were your comments to them? Thank you very much for watching, and as always, good luck out there in the fog, and see you next time.